surprise, everybody. We got another SNS uh, for the end of the year here. And I know that last week I told you that probably wasn't going to be another SNS, but I decided to go ahead and squeeze another one in. I've got a little bit of time left before I head out for my uh, vacation, but I've also got some other footage that I haven't used yet, some stuff that I've been filming at work that I thought we could throw into an SNS. I don't know how long it'll be. It's probably going to be a little bit shorter, but we'll see. Uh, just some other footage there at work that I want to share with you guys and, uh, you know, have another video for the week. I like to, I like to keep those videos rolling when I can. So I'm getting this one done early and you guys will be watching it for the normal SNS time slot. But yeah, it is some stuff from work and kind of want to uh, touch on that here for just a second. And there's, there's been a couple comments out there about you sure are showing a lot of stuff from work, you know, and I miss seeing your shop. And let me just say, man, that I, I, I say this in some of my comments and I, and I want to kind of make it publicly known. I film what I can week to week. Okay. Uh, it's pretty rare that I, I plan filming certain things. I mean, I have jobs like at work, you know, there's, there's a shaft that's coming up and I'm going to plan filming that. All right. That's, that's different, but uh, as far as what you see is what I get into week to week, all right? The stuff that you see out here is stuff that comes up week to week, you know? Lately, there hasn't been a lot of projects, and that was one of my goals for the, uh, the construction work that I had done around here is I was trying to get those smaller project jobs, you know, for YouTube done so that I could focus on some, getting some shop organization done, and things that I want to do around here. And I've been working on some of those things, you know, little by little. I just haven't really been filming a lot of that stuff because it's just, to me, it's just boring stuff. But the things that I share with you is what I get the opportunity to film each week. And I think about that constantly whenever I'm working. So, for instance, some of the video that you're going to see in this episode is some short videos that I took with my phone right here. And I was also going to mention this. I keep this in my pocket now. I bought this little ceramonic mic that plugs into my iPhone down on the, you know, the, the headphone jack. It's a little ceramonic mic, and it pivots. You can move it around. And this should help my audio tremendously with my phone right here. So whenever I don't actually have my GoPros at work, because I can't have those every day, but um, whenever I'm doing certain little jobs, I try to take little quick clips, you know, like a minute less with my iPhone. And this takes great video, you know, but the audio always kind of sucked on it. So I bought that little ceremonic mic, and it's going to help improve the audio when I get little short clips of this with this phone right here. So I got a couple little short videos that, that I edited on the phone. That's something new that I'm trying is uh, to take some video on the phone edit it on the phone and produce it on the phone and then for you know for youtube i can just transfer that over onto my computer and then drop it into the uh, you know the video software here so got a couple of those short videos we're going to share and the main footage that i've got to share with you is a metalizing job a spray welding job i just so happened to have my camera there at work that day i had that little one to do so i took the opportunity and i filmed it uh, if you guys haven't watched that before I've got several way back on my channel, some spray welding, and it's what you use to repair journals, you know, like a bearing journal or a seal journal on uh, some shafts. We, we mainly just use it for a seal journal, and that's, that's pretty much it. So I uh, did a little seal repair job using the metalizing technique, so that's what you're going to see, okay? And that's really about all I got for you. I just wanted to kind of make this little introduction and, and uh, let you know that uh, that's what the footage is going to be and you know really just tell you guys thank you very much for all of your continued support um, continue to be amazed at the growth of this channel we just hit 152,000 subscribers for this channel blows me away that I have that kind of viewership never did I think that I would ever have that kind of viewership here just really amazes me and it's all because of you guys and sharing your videos and you know giving me likes and comments and it's just amazing so 
I hope to continue making this content and as I said earlier I show you the content as it as I get it you know as uh, as I get jobs as I get projects I film them and I share them with you week to week so one week you might have a project that you're gonna see here in my shop over on the monarch or the mill here in the next week it might be something I'm doing at my other job you know so whatever I have is what you're gonna see and then of course we're gonna have our planned out projects you know that that we're gonna get into once I get once the dust kind of settles around here and I get this place the way I want it, we're going to get back to some, you know, a multi-series, multi-video series of uh, projects, you know, building something. So I wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and a great New Year's. And I look forward to 2018. And I look forward to some more growth around here and some more improvements around the shop and around the property. And... I hope that we can just keep this thing going. All right. So enjoy the video and we'll see you guys real soon. I've got a shaft here out of a gearbox that has a badly worn and corroded seal journal. And this journal is it's a two and five eighths journal. And what we're going to do is we're going to metalize it or spray weld it. So we're going to set it up here in the lathe, and I'll show you the process of masking it, undercutting it, threading it, spraying it, and finishing it. Okay, let's get going. We're not going to bite hard on these splines. I'm just holding it just enough just to hold it, get it squared up back off I'm gonna put my little copper pads in there There's the masking compound. You want to apply this wherever you don't want the metal powder to stick. And it won't take a lot. Just like putting a thin coat of paint on something. I'm making sure to get that radius and that chamfer right here really good and that journal on each side of where we're going to spray it. Now that's good right there. Just need to let it dry. And as soon as I'm done with this, I go to the bathroom and I wash this out. This is just water-based uh, stuff here, so that just you just want to make sure you rinse your brush out. I'm going to use a threading tool there, and that particular insert, I have a flat ground on the end of it. That's one that had burned off or chipped or whatever, and I just put a flat on it. And what we're going to do is undercut this approximately 20 thousandths or until it cleans up. And this is a pretty hard shaft, so I'm going to be turning it slow so it doesn't burn that carbide up. Touched off and uh, set a zero here on the dial. That's the groove there that was worn into the shaft. That's a hardened shaft and a rubber oil seal did that.
That was the second groove. So it looks like we're definitely going to have to take it to 20 thousandths to clean it up. That was only 10 thousandths, by the way. All right, come back to our start. All right, we're gonna go in 20, make another pass. We're gonna come back in, and uh, where I had my depth set there at 20 thousand. So I'm going to go an additional 15 and we're going to scratch a fine pitch thread across there. All right. There's the gun I use. Teradyne by Eutectic. 21022 powder. I'm going to get it preheated, and I was going to mention that I have the tailstock kind of loose so that as this shaft grows, it can easily just push that back and not bind up right there. I've also got the fiberglass matting here to uh, keep the dust and everything from getting on the ways. I always clean the machine off whenever I'm done. Okay, we got her there. First thing I do as soon as I stop is I go over and turn the, bat, the, gas, the gas bottles off so that you don't forget and waste your gas. But we want to build it up to about 50 to 60 thousandths over your finished size. All right, and then we're there. We're gonna cool it with a fan. All right, it's cooled down to where I can keep my hand on it. It's still slightly warm, but not much. So we're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and start turning it. Now I'm running 300 RPM. We're gonna run a light feed. I just wanna to touch it. We're gonna take 20 thousandths. Alright, 
that was our first cleanup cut there so we'll go ahead and mic it we want to finish two inches 0.625 all right so we got 25 30 32 thousandths to come off of it I'm just going to take light cuts uh, 10 thousandths a pass That's just the area outside of where I wanted the buildup to be that's coming off there. That's the chamfer area, actually. See, that's the chamfer area, and this will peel off right there. Twelve thousandths to clean up. So I dialed in 11 there. I'm at 626. I got one thousandths. We'll go ahead and use the tool to try to get rid of this overspray here. You can sometimes take your scale because you know it's a multi-tool, right? And you can just push that overspray off on the other side there, just like that. Two and five eighths. There it is, finished up, turned and polished, ready to go. So there it is, one metalized seal seal journal. That is a common repair that we do here. We have a lot of shafts like this that just have a little groove worn in it, and it's a, it's a very good solid repair, and it keeps the cost down, and we can get them done pretty quick like this. All right, so there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed. This next set of clips, this is a bearing plate that I just machined this week. That's a piece of 11 inch ductile iron and you can see the original there busted so I had to make a new one for the gearbox build. So that journal is going to finish at 190 millimeters.
screw the tool to get it hollowed out. That's 800,000 feet. We'll get it hollowed out enough to where I can use my machine engine turning a face and tool to kind of finish it all out. What I was telling you there is that I'm using that face grooving tool to plunge in and remove enough metal so that I can go in there with a turning and facing tool to finish facing out the rest of the slug. That's the tool that I'm using right there. You see how it's profiled. That's what I mean by hollowing it out and making it a little easier just to finish facing it and everything with the CNMG tool. There we have this side finished up and we got the ID finished up. What do you think? I put a five degree angle on that inside bore there. Kind of match what was there on the original casting. Got an O-ring groove machined in there. So we need to flip it around and face the back side to the proper width. finished up all the laid work it finished so that threaded hole there is not 16 millimeter it's definitely not 5 8 18 what it is it's 3 8 19 BSPP let's see if I can see it you can see it right there there you go 3 8 19 Reddish pipe, parallel pipe. Okay, so all we got left now is the uh, bolt hole pattern that we got to drill through it. Okay, we got her set up in the mill. I used my coax indicator to find the center of it. And what we have is a 230 millimeter bolt circle eight holes and the hole diameter is 18 millimeters. Using the digital readout go to uh, hole number four. Let's find this a zero there, you know, within a close proximity. And we're gonna move the X axis. So much harder to line up metric than it is imperial. Okay. There's our next hole location right there. There we have all the holes finished up. Alright, just chamfering the other side now. 
I use a quill stop there and I run my run my cutter down. And it'll make them all the same. Just break that edge. Okay guys, we got her finished up. There's the new bearing plate and the old one of course. So we got her finished up, everything's on size. This fit here, I can't remember if I had uh, mentioned it in the other videos or not so it's a hundred and we had like a hundred ninety millimeter fit right there the OD was 271 I believe 271 millimeter a little bit of metric for for you guys but it turned out good it looks good that's it all right hope you enjoyed that little little short video i just wanted to mention that this little video here was one of those that i created just with my iphone i filmed it edited it and produced it right directly on my iphone this next segment is me using our hexagon metrology cmm for the very first time to measure out this bearing housing that you see in the picture right there. And then this is Dylan, my coworker. He's the one that's been doing all the training on this unit. And then uh, he in turn is gonna be training all of us there to be able to use this too. And what I wanted to do was on this housing, the two machined faces, I wanted to check to see if they were parallel because I wanted to mount this in the bore mill on my angle plates and be able to sweep the outer face uh, true and then do that outer that outer bearing bore there so i just got a few clips of us using this um the cmm to do our measurements there and it worked out great all right so this is a part that i've got to do some boring and sleeving on this end right here this bearing fit is bad and what i wanted to know was is this face and this face here parallel to each other and how concentric this bearing fit is, this machine there is, and this bearing fit, and all I want to see how close everything was. So we did some measurements, and that's a that's a 2D rendering of all of the fits there. So the two faces are parallel, uh, maximum. You said seven tenths. Yep. Seven tenths. Okay. And then we've got a little bit of deviation on the bores there too, but it's uh, where well, our main thing was the uh, the two faces. So we know that the two faces are parallel. Okay, so Dylan's making a scan, right? Yep, scanning okay. our part. Right, here we go. it is producing a 3D image of what we just measured with the probe. Painting a picture digitally. All right, so there's our 3D rendering. I've just got, a, got them kind of holding it still, all right? So there we go. Now we can't get the, uh, we can't get the, the full thing on the bottom because obviously it's sitting here on the V-blocks, but it's still giving us 
He says that's still giving us uh, reference. It's giving points. us measurement points we can yeah. use. Yeah, that's cool stuff. We can we can do what's called a leapfrog, in which we take a bunch of points to line off of, flip the part over, right. scan the bottom side, or realign our part, then scan the bottom side, and then we'll have the whole thing. Oh, okay. Move it around just a bit. So as he moves the arm there, it's it's repositioning it on the screen here. Cool way to uh, measure up a, a part. I was able to get the thing set up and indicated and shimmed and zeroed out. I indicated that bearing bore back there on the back side. And then we made sure that that front face was indicated parallel. Using a carbide insert tool, and we're going to bore it out and machine sleeve, put it in there.